I'm here today to give you an update on Flux. We're going to be starting off with building this out with market structure. So the first thing we're going to be doing from a technical analysis standpoint is plotting in this uh, this obviously bullish market structure that has consisted from this uh, bear market low down at around 30 cents up to around $1.78. So let's break this down together and see what we can conjure up. So we're going to be starting off on the daily time frame. And the reason why we're going back in history to do this here is because we need to basically look at very, very key levels um, to be using as a point of reference here for the live uh, price action, the live PA here. So let's uh, let's put in a new, uh, this is going to be obviously be the uh, the bear market low, which we will leave in red. Um, you can see significant pullback coming through. Did we break that high? Near enough break that high. Did we break the high? Not quite. I mean, it's enough for me. It's enough for me. I, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, and again, guys, this is it's, it's your own bias here of, of how you want to do market structure sometimes here. So significant pullbacks are your own bias. So we're going to be changing that to yellow, and that is going to be the higher low reference point for us to be looking out for there. You can see coming up, breaking this high again, significant pullback coming down, and then breaking that high to confirm this as a higher low. So this would be the next higher low market structure point. And you can see here coming up, breaking highs again, significant pullbacks here, new highs. I mean, the pullback's not that great, not that strong here. This would be a pullback that I would be using as a reference point. And you can see from there, we actually uh, didn't break the high for a little while. So it's, this was just a simple uh, market structure test point here that we can be using for reference. Now, after that, you can see breaking highs here, really, really, really strong stuff. Massive pullback to the downside. This consisted of... Not small, 20% there. That's enough for me to be putting in a new uh, higher low here. So that's going to be a higher low market structure point. Again, massive pullback coming through from here. This would be a higher low market structure point as well. And from there, it's just been a bit choppy, guys. We've just seen a, a lot of upwards momentum. There's really not been any significant pullbacks from that point. So that is market structure done. These are the higher lows for this uptrend here. And essentially what this means is when we break in higher lows, Essentially, it means that um, we're having that reversal of the trend, okay? So what are we looking for now? I mean, one thing that I would like to do is a bit of Fibonacci here from the swing, bear market swing low to the all-time high. Not the all-time high, but the, uh, the bull market high. And you can see, very good example of what we were talking about earlier, guys. It's... Uh, it's 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 actually crossed the 0 0.5 Fibonacci level, and that essentially means that um, the reversal of the trend is now confirmed okay so let's uh let's draw this in from a downtrend perspective and get some predictions going so you can see this is obviously the high you can come down setting this low this would be the uh, the lower high point confirmed because we broke this low here okay so this there would be one significant lower high at this point in time i'm marking that in orange yeah, marking that in orange. And that is going to be the lower high there. And you can see, obviously, this is the lower low. We haven't actually seen a significant pullback from this low being set just yet. Maybe we're seeing it now. Nothing too crazy. But the next point I would be really be looking out for there is a bit more bullish momentum. New lower high to potentially be set there. When the lower high is sort of forming here, we would like to be potentially either shorting this asset down to the most recent low and once we hit that most recent low we will get a confirmation of a lower high there so yeah overall it is looking like we are going to see bearish momentum for this asset playing out here so uh please be aware let's get some trend lines in and let's see if there's any points of uh reference or confluence that we can be using and then we can be looking at the um yeah then we can be looking at the uh, the quantum insight for uh for a, a quantum insight <laughs> okay so yeah that could be a trend line there still valid you can see resistance coming down but um i would be more inclined to probably do something along the lines of that instead and that would uh, give us sort of a falling wedge again guys with trend lines the more touches the better um yeah the more touches the better so um that's definitely a confluence point for us to be looking out for there for the future you can see this is a falling pizza slice it's a falling wedge to the downside these tend to actually usually break to the upside, which is an interesting factor um, that we can be using in the future here um, when we do see this asset actually reverse. OK, don't think it's going to do something like that, <laughs> I would say, because um, we are quite fresh into this uh, bearish market structure for flux. I probably would expect a bit more bullish momentum to the upside 
testing this as a level of resistance here and then seeing that dirty, disgusting dump to the downside. But let's talk about a short position from this area because if you actually look back in history, guys, this area when we were in this uptrend is actually a really strong confluence point. We bring in a nice little horizontal here. You can see resistance, resistance, and this is not small moves, okay? Just simply 15% there. You can see 26% there. So these moves are a pretty strong for flux to the downside. And why are we using this as a reference point right now? Because what do you know? Where does it line up with? It lines up directly with that trend line coming down from that falling wedge uh, from from this from this lovely lovely move here so essentially the stars are aligning for a lovely lovely short position um trend is your friend we're going to be going with the downtrend here waiting for this pullback waiting for that resistance here and it's looking pretty strong let's get some ma's because um we're going to do ma's now and then we're going to do volume weighted atr bands because uh i want to see how these things are all lining up with each other here let's get some ma's together That'll be the one. Okay, so we've got the 7 SMA coming down, which we have tested here. Okay, interesting stuff. That's uh, usually a really, really strong area for a, a move to the downside when we are seeing a downtrend. If you guys haven't seen my uh, 7 SMA strategy, it's basically when you see a massive move, like a massive, massive move to the downside or the upside, the retest of the 7 SMA is usually worth around 1% or so. Like it's got a super high success rate here. Um, for example... Massive move to the downside, retest of the 7 SMA, bang. I mean, it's clearly worth more than 1% there. It's like 7, 8, 9% there. But um, it's really, really, really strong, okay? For example, massive move to the upside here, testing that 7 SMA again, another move to the upside, super, super clean. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a great little strategy to keep in your back pocket if you are looking to... Um, this works multi multi time frame as well, guys. If you want to scalp one hour, one hour charts, 15 minute charts, the 7 SMA is... um. Is a really really good little tool i don't know why it works really well for crypto but it does but yeah seven sma if we can get above that then um bullish momentum to the upside uh coming to this test point for flux is sort of the idea now with the 21 ema coming down this would be sort of what i'm looking for for that entry point the resistance point off the set of off the 21 ema coming down as that confluence is um is super super likely so that is the stars have aligned for us there as well Let's bring up some volume weighted ATR bands here. It's volume weighted average true range. If you guys didn't know what that is. And uh, yeah, they're uh, a little bit small for our liking. So we have to change some settings quickly on them. Um, yeah, we want we want the, the sort of the macro time frames here. 12 hour, the four hour, the daily. Get the three day in there as well if we can. These are really, really good points of reference. It might take a second to load that in interesting stuff so we're actually bouncing cleanly off the the 12 hour and the daily for support which is super super strong when this happens guys if we actually go back to uh, i'm probably not going to get the history here on this chart but um on uh, on bitcoin it's, it's god mode bouncing off the daily okay when we're, when we're seeing a reversal of the trend there but um what what can we see here we can see the four hour is um actually in a digressionary start so this is uh sort of what's holding us back right now now, this is a uh, very interesting stuff because with our target of a price of around here for a short position, we should ideally have the four hour a little bit higher here. OK, so what is probably likely to happen here is we're probably going to grind away here for a while with this four hour. Remember, we're on the daily time frame here, guys, we're on the daily time frame. So um, this four hour is very reactive. It reacts to the four hour candles here. So if we do see bullish momentum continue for the next sort of one two days here and it's and it's continuous on the four hour chart here then it's very likely we see a nice big spike in the four hour for bullish momentum now if that does happen which is quite likely here we will see the four hour line up pretty nicely with our area again so that is a, a very nice point for us to be looking out for there for v for flux did he said vra there um but yeah for flux looking pretty strong there let's look at the quantum insight Stars are aligning there for that lovely short. Quantum Insight's actually looking good for a long right now. You can see momentum is super, super overextended to the downside here. If you're new to trading, guys, it's a sort of relative strength index. It's not relative strength index but because it's momentum based. But um, using, using it as an example, oversold um, on the relative strength index is sort of the same as uh, momentum to the downside. So, for example, you can see 
Really strong momentum to the downside, really, really low here. You can see this is probably a nice bullish move to the upside. You can see, quite nice. You see that bullish momentum retraces after seeing such a big move to the downside here. And we can uh, flash back in history and see, again, momentum to the downside here, super, super low. What do you know? We see a nice move to the upside yet again. It's, and it's this line on the bottom side here is what we're using as that point of reference for that reversal. And in terms of the live price right now, that's super low. We've got stochastic, really, really low as well. We've had the bullish crossover. So it's looking like we are going to see some really, really, really strong momentum to the upside here. Now, with that being said, the momentum to the upside will potentially bring us to that short point that we're using as that reference point. Okay, guys. So yeah, overall flux looking pretty good. Let me know what you think of uh, this potential position in the comment section. And um, if you like the content, obviously smash a little like on it. And if you're new to the channel, guys, hit the subscribe button. We're streaming Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon UTC plus seven, wherever you're watching in the world. That's going to be it for me. Thank you ever so much. Peace.